Thank you to the Phillips Theological Seminary for your invitation um, to serve as your preacher for this special service. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. Hear God's word for us. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to share with you a sermon based on that passage you just heard. And I call this sermon, The N-Word. The N-Word. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? That's what Nathaniel asks. Nazareth? with a shocked look on his face. You've got to be kidding me, Nazareth? Really? There's no Starbucks in Nazareth, so it can't be a town of any real significance. It's not a bustling urban center with commerce and finance and high-rise buildings above the city's horizons with lots of job opportunities and a kick in nightlife? Nazareth? Nazareth was a small rural village, perhaps with a population of 500 to 2,000 people, located in the hill country of Galilee, known for fishing and farming known for having more Gentiles, which meant having more foreigners. Pastor Jeremy Troxler once said, apparently nothing much happens around Nazareth, nothing to make the news. They apparently don't even have a sign on the edge of town that says, welcome to Nazareth, home of. Of course it would be blank or Empty at the end of the phrase because it's believed that there's nothing of worth in Nazareth. Nazareth? Former Harvard minister Peter Gomes said Nazareth is not the site of great expectations. But now you're telling me that the Messiah, the Son of God, the King of Israel, the Savior of the world has come and he's from Nazareth? (laughs) Nah, brother. No way, you've got to be kidding me. Nazareth is the backside of the backyard of nowhere. It's the insignificant of the insignificant, the bottom of the basement, the cesspool for the sanctified. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? John Wesley cautions us to guard against these popular prejudices, which is what makes Nathaniel suspect Jesus to be an imposter, just because he's from Nazareth. 
prejudice and stereotypes about Nazarenes undergird Nathaniel's question. Prejudice and stereotypes undergird many of the mass shootings we see in this country. Protestant reformer Martin Luther calls Nathaniel a dunce for asking that question. Can anything good come out of somewhere different from where I'm from, geographically, theologically, denominationally, racially, ethnically, educationally, and politically? Can anything good come from those people, those Republicans, those Democrats, those liberals, those conservatives? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? out of another location, out of another experience, another group, not my own, out of another human being who is not me, Nazareth? Nazareth, that's the real N word. Do we think nothing good can come out of anyone or anything else if it isn't us? our race, our ideologies, our theologies, our perspectives, our interpretations, our institutions, our clubs, our sororities, fraternities, our, our, our. Maybe we judge Nazareth because we've never been there. We've never been on the other side of the tracks, never been on the backside of the backyard of nowhere. We've never experienced Nazareth and don't know anybody who lives there. We've only heard about them on podcasts or in a tweet or on a YouTube video clip or the nightly news. But we don't know any Nazarenes for ourselves, which is what leads to that question. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? It, it sounds so elitist, so entitled, so uppity. Can anything good come from over there when I'm over here? We Baptist folks know all too well about this. Comedian Emo Phillips tells a story like this and he makes it plain. Once I saw this guy on a bridge about to jump and I said, don't do it. He said, nobody loves me, and I said, God loves you. Do you, be, do you believe in God? And he said, yes. And I said, are you a Christian or a Jew? And he said, a Christian. And I said, me too, Protestant or Catholic. And he said, Protestant. And I said, me too. What denomination? He said, Baptist. I said, me too, Northern Baptist or Southern Baptist. And he said, Northern Baptist. And I said, me too. Northern Conservative Baptist or Northern Liberal Baptist? He said, Northern Conservative Baptist. And I said, me too. Northern Conservative Baptist, Great Lakes Region or Northern Conservative Baptist, Eastern Region? He said, Northern Conservative Baptist, Great Lakes Region. I said, me too. Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1879 or Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1912? He said Northern Conservative Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1912. And I said, die, heretic. And I pushed him over. This is how we treat those who are different those who are from Nazareth. We push them off of a cliff and hope they will die on the streets of Memphis, even as we call them the N-word, you Nazarene. Just because they're over there and I'm over here, just because they are not me. But we forget that human beings live in Nazareth. Nazarenes live there. Adults play pickleball there. Teenagers play pickup basketball there. Children run on the school playground over there. Nazareth? I have one of them on my staff here at Duke Chapel, a Nazarene, denominationally. I can confirm that Nazarenes are human beings. And this is where Jesus was situated 
located in human flesh somewhere, a real place with real people, with struggles and beauty and dreams like everyone else. Human beings live in Nazareth. Have we forgotten that? A Nazarene could have recited what Langston Hughes wrote. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. I too am America. I too am human. They may not look like us or act like us or think like us, but there's no need to defecate on them just because they are from Nazareth. I don't know who I'm talking to, but who or what is Nazareth to you? And what often happens to Nazareth? Banks are removed from there. Prisons are built there. Schools don't have adequate educational resources there. The cycle of poverty flourishes there. Highways are built through their town under the facade of urban renewal when it's really urban removal. Just because it's Nazareth. We forget, as Dr. King reminds us, that we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be, and you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. We forget that Dr. King also said that there is some good in the worst of us, and some evil in the best of us. Yet we still have the audacity to wonder and use the N-word, Nazareth. We judge a book by its cover. Therefore, judge someone by the color of their skin and not the content of their character. We judge Nazareth, and Nathaniel judges Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. In the early months of, of living here in the South, in Durham, North Carolina, for the very first time after moving from Princeton, I was invited to have lunch with an elderly senior citizen. I saw it as a pastoral visit uh, over a meal and an opportunity to learn from someone who had lived much longer than me. I sat down at the table with him. I blessed the food. We began to eat. It was full of small talk un until this elderly man made a big move. At that point, I, I stopped talking and I just kept eating, thinking, is this man really saying this? This Christian gentleman knew my biography and educational profile. He knew I had received a bachelor's degree from Stanford University, a master of divinity degree from Princeton Theological Seminary, a doctor of theology degree from Emmanuel College in the University of Toronto. He knew that I was on the faculty of Princeton Seminary and now on the faculty at Duke University. He held Princeton Seminary as an alum in high esteem and as well as Duke University Chapel. But what spilled out of his mouth almost made my food spew out. As we communed, he asked, do you think you were accepted into Stanford because of your color? And then he asked, what were your SAT scores? I did not respond to that question. But he did with these words, you probably wouldn't get in today. This was my welcome to the American South. As dean of Duke University Chapel, a professor at Duke Divinity School, I was the first black dean of the chapel here, and this man helped me, though I didn't need help to remember that I was black, a black man in the South. He might as well have called me the N-word, Nazareth. But I'm not alone. I'm sure you know the emphasis of Howard Thurman's book, Jesus and the Disinherited. It's on Jesus of Nazareth. 
And he was a a Jew living under Roman oppression, a disinherited Nazarene living in poverty whose spirit gave the oppressed, those whose backs are up against the wall, courage while he pronounced the good news of freedom to them. Jesus of Nazareth shows us the Christian way, his loving liberation, not nationalistic domination and discrimination. Even in our cultural memory, we should remember that Dr. King's final mission in Memphis, Tennessee was fighting on behalf of disenfranchised sanitation workers as part of the Poor Keep People's campaign. Can anything good come out of poverty from the disinherited out of Nazareth? King recognized that garbage collectors were also human beings with gifts to offer the world. They might not have thousands of likes on social media or be a part of the upper echelons of society, but they are children of God, created in the image of God, and that alone gives them worth, value, and dignity as a human being, even if they come from Nazareth. Recently, an incarcerated man told me in a class that I teach in a federal prison, none of us deserve to be forgotten. Who or what is Nazareth to you? What I know and Dr. King knew and Nathaniel learned is that there are gifts and even God in Nazareth. Nathaniel eventually recognizes that the incarnate word from Nazareth is the flesh of God, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior savior of the world. But in the end, we see what happens to poor Nazarenes or those associated with them. We see Jesus on a cross with a sign above his head reading, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm here to say, don't despise Nazareth because it may be where God resides. Nazareth offers gifts and God to the world. Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth? Yes. Nazareth, the backside of the backyard of nowhere the insignificant of the insignificant, the bottom of the basement, the cesspool for the sanctified, bearing the wooden cross of Calvary alone as the N-word is spewed out in his face. Nazareth! You still might be wondering, can anything good truly come out of Nazareth? And I'm here to say that good can come out of Nazareth. How do I know? Well, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, and sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I all because of Jesus of Nazareth. How do I know? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, all because of Jesus of Nazareth. How do I know? You thought I was worth saving and You came into my life. You thought I was worth keeping. You cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You you sacrificed your life so I can be free. I can be whole. All because of Jesus of Nazareth. Good and God. Come out of Nazareth. So don't despise Nazareth because that which you despise and disregard may be the source of your salvation. Nazareth is amazing because regardless of your stereotypes about Nazareth, look at what and who comes out of it for you. We may think the real power is in Capitol Hill, but the real power is in Nazareth. Jesus 
of Nazareth. So can anything good come out of Nazareth? Like Philip said to Nathaniel, just come and see. Amen.